In continuation with our third and final part of hepatitis, we see the nursing assessment, which includes subjective and objective data. So the subjective data includes the past health history regarding hemophilia, exposure to infected persons, ingestion of contaminated food or water, exposure to benzene, carbon tetrachloride, or other hepatotoxic agents, crowded, unsanitary living conditions, exposure to contaminated needles, recent travel, organ transplantation, exposure to new drug regimens, hemodialysis or transfusion of blood or blood products before 1992, and HIV status if known. Medications, use and misuse of acetaminophen, new prescription, over-the-counter, or herbal medications or supplements that the patient was taking. Also obtain other important health information regarding health perception and health management, any use of um, IV drugs and alcohol abuse, any distaste for cigarettes among smokers and high-risk sexual behaviors, any recent history of weight loss, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, and feeling of fullness in the right upper quadrant, any history of dark urine, light colored stools, constipation or diarrhea, skin rashes or hives, history of increased fatigable fatigueness, um, arthralgias and myalgias, any right upper quadrant pain and liver tenderness, headache and pruritus, any exposure as um, healthcare worker, as a long-term care institution resident, incarceration or homelessness, perform a focused physical assessment for the objective data, um, assess for low-grade fever, lethargy, lymphadenopathy, any rash, skin changes, jaundice, any ictric sclera injection site for process, and also palpate for hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. Nursing diagnosis includes imbalance, nutrition, less and body requirements, related to anorexia and nausea, activity intolerance related to fatigue and weakness, risk for impaired liver function related to viral infection. The goals, patient will have relief of discomfort to be able to resume normal activities and have returned to norm normal liver function without complications. Health promotion under collaborative care for hepatitis A virus infection. Preventive measures include personal and environmental hygiene and health education to promote good sanitation. Hand washing is essential and is probably the most important precautions. Teach about careful hand washing after bowel movements and before eating. Control and uh, screening of food handlers can also help to control outbreaks. Vaccination is the best protection against HAV. All children at one year of age should receive the hepatitis A vaccine. A single dose is given IM in the deltoid muscle. The primary immunization provides immunity within 30 days after a single dose is given and a booster dose is recommended 6 to 12 months after the primary dose. Adults at risk should also receive the vaccine. These include people who travel to areas with increased rates of hepatitis A, men who have sex with men, especially anal intercourse, users of injection and non-injection drugs, persons with clotting factor disorders, example hemophilia, and persons with chronic liver disease. Isolation is not required for HAV infection. For a patient with HAV infection, use infection control precautions. A private room is indicated if the patient is incontinent of stool or has poor personal hygiene. Both hepatitis A vaccine and, I and immunoglobulin are used for prevention of HAV infection after exposure to an infected person. 
or in other words post exposure prophylaxis the vaccine is used for pre exposure prophylaxis and immunoglobulin can be used either before or after exposure Immunoglobulins provide temporary 1 to 2 months passive immunity and is effective for preventing hepatitis A if given within three, within 2 weeks after exposure. Immunoglobulin is recommended for pe persons who do not have anti HAV antibodies and are exposed as a result of close contact with persons who have HAV um, or foodborne exposure like household and daycare center both patients with because patients with HAV are most infectious just before the onset of symptoms which is a pre ictric phase those exposed through household contact or foodborne outbreaks should receive immunoglobulins although immunoglobulins may not prevent infection in all persons it may modify the illness to a subclinical infection when hepatitis A occurs in a food handler, immunoglobulin should be administered to all other food handlers at the establishment. Persons who have received a dose of hepatitis A vaccine more than one month previously or who have a history of lab-confirmed HAV infection do not require immunoglobulins. Hepatitis B virus infection the best way to reduce incidence of HBV infection is to identify those at risk, screen them for HBV, and vaccinate those who have not been infected. Teach individuals at high risk for contracting HBV to reduce the risks. Good hygienic practice, including hand washing and the use of gloves when expecting contact with blood, is important. Patients should not share razors, toothbrushes, and other personal items. Teach patients to use a condom for sexual intercourse and recommend that the partner be vaccinated. The HBV vaccine is the best means of prevention. The HBV vaccine, the Recombivax HB or the Angerix B, contains HBS antigen that promotes the synthesis of specific antibodies directed against HBV. The vaccine is given in a series of three IM injections in the deltoid muscles. The second dose is administered within one month of the first one and the third one within six months of the first, that is 016. The vaccine is more than 95% effective. Only minor adverse reactions have been reported with the vaccination, including transient fever and soreness at the injection site. So fever and soreness, transient fever and soreness, they are okay. The vaccine is not contraindicated during pregnancy. The first dose of hepatitis B vaccine should be given at birth and the vaccine series completed by age of 6 and 18 months. Older children and adolescents who did not previously receive the hepatitis B vaccine should also be vaccinated. It is also important to vaccinate adults in the at-risk groups. Members of the household of a patient with HBV should be tested and vaccinated if they are HBS antigen and antibody negative. Hepatitis vaccination is recommended for patients with chronic kidney disease before they start dialysis. Dialysis recipients should routinely have their antibody titer levels checked to determine the need for revaccination. For post exposure, prophylaxis, the HBV vaccine and hepatitis B immunoglobulins are used. HBIG contains antibodies to HBV and confers temporary passive immunity. HBIG is recommended for post-exposure prophylaxis in cases of needle stick, mucous membrane contact or sexual exposure and for infants born to mothers who are HBS AG positive. Ideally, HBIG should be given within 24 hours of exposure and the vaccine series 016 should also be started. Hepatitis C No vaccine is currently available for hepatitis C. The primary measures to prevent HCV transmission includes screening of blood, organ and tissue donors use of infection control precautions and modification of high-risk behavior. 
nursing implementation. Acute care. In patients with hepatitis, assess for the presence and degree of jaundice. In light-skinned persons, jaundice is usually observed first in the sclera of the eye and later in the skin. In dark-skinned persons, jaundice is observed in the hot palate of the mouth and inner canthus of the eyes. The urine may have a dark brown or brownish red color because of the presence of bilirubin. Comfort measures to relieve pruritus if present, headache and arthralgias are helpful. Ensure that the patient receives adequate nutrition. Anorexia, the anorexia and taste, distaste for food cause nutritional problems. Assess the patient's tolerance of specific foods as well as eating pattern. Small frequent meals may be preferable to three large ones and may also help prevent nausea. Often, a patient with hepatitis finds that anorexia is not as severe in the morning, so it is easier to eat a good breakfast than a large dinner. Measures to stimulate the appetite such as mouth care, antiemetics, and attractively served meals in pleasant surroundings may help. Drinking carbonated beverages and avoidance of very hot or very cold foods may help decrease anorexia. Adequate fluid intake is important to 2500 to 3000 ml per day. Rest is essential and is an important factor in promoting hepatocyte regeneration. Assess the patient's response to rest and activity plan and modify it as needed. Liver function tests and symptoms are used as a guide to activity. Psychologic and emotional rest is as essential as physical rest. Limitation in activity may produce anxiety and extreme restlessness in some patients. Diversional activities such as reading and hobbies may help the patient. Ambulatory and home care. Most patients with viral hepatitis are cared for at home. So you need to assess the patient's knowledge of nutrition and provide the necessary dietary teaching. Avoid alcohol. Caution the patient about overexertion and the need to follow the healthcare provider's advice about when to return to work. Teach the patient and caregiver how to prevent transmission to other family members according to the type of hepatitis infection. Also teach what symptoms should be reported to the healthcare provider. Return of anorexia, nausea and vomiting, jaundice, bleeding tendencies, pruritus, fever, etc. and look out for recurrence. Instruct the need for regular follow-up for at least one year. Those receiving interferon for the treatment of HBV or HCV need to be taught subcutaneous administration and also the importance of compliance to treatment. Patients who are positive for HBSAG, in other words, chronic carrier, or HCV antibody should not donate blood. The expected outcomes in this in a patient with hepatitis are maintain the patient will maintain food and fluid intake adequately to meet nutritional needs, demonstrate gradual increase in activity tolerance, perform daily activities with scheduled rest periods, and able to able to explain the transmission and how to prevent transmission. So in summary, we studied the different types of viral hepatitis, which is the A, B, C, D, and E, and then the transmission, um, the clinical manifestations, the ectric and the post-ectric uh, manifestations, complications, treatment, and health promotion.